Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rechakodash. Also, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that continue to rule very well to this very day. That's continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And also, Shalom to the whole elect that is also continually laboring this work that's plowing and giving diligence to make your calling election sure and faith. In truth and sincerity and in all charity now our topic of this video is going to be entitled the separation of the righteous now uh, of course if the spirit has it to where I titled this video in a different way I'm gonna move according to the spirit but in this particular topic I'm basically I'm gonna be discussing how the men of the Lord, or should I say the righteous, which consist first and foremost of the nation of Israel, which is primarily made up of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And then you have others that are, that are scattered abroad, the confusion of faces that are also out scattered throughout the four corners of the earth the ones who are found of the righteous which is the nation of Israel and in particular one third a one third number of the nation of Israel who are of the righteous they ought to be separated from the rest of the world you know and uh, this is what is not being taught or, or this is not what's being uh, looked at as uh, as doctrine when it comes to the Bible because the people believe that, you know, when it comes to the scriptures and the Bible, is, is it speaks about everybody joining hand in hand and everybody being with one another, you know, basically uh, putting aside their differences to come together. But the scriptures plainly t uh, show you that there is always a separation. All right. Uh, I'll give you an example. Abraham. All right. Because you know these uh, Christians, they always bring up the, the case of Abraham. Well, here's the thing. Abraham was separated from his family. All right. What did the Lord tell Abraham to do? He said to get to get himself away from his father and his, his father's house and go and uh, go into a land which he's going to give him or, or give him an inheritance. Which is going to be promised to him and his seed and his seed who received the promise it didn't go to Ishmael alright it didn't go to any other of his sons other than Isaac okay and out of Isaac you know, through the line of Isaac his seed it went to Jacob alright so that is the chosen line alright that's where the inheritance has, has gone okay so right there is a separation, all right? If the Lord wanted to include every single person, then he wouldn't have included Ishmael, all right? But the Lord had it to where Abraham separated Ishmael away from him, all right? He pretty much uh, had uh, Ishmael or, or, or his son, who was uh, also the son of uh, Hagar, which was a bondwoman, and he sent them away, all right? The reason why is because the scriptures say uh, the, the son of the bond woman it will not be heir with the son of uh, the free woman. All right. So Isaac was separated from Ishmael. And not only that, you have other cases in the scriptures where the righteous were separated from the wicked. You know, the ones that the Lord did not want. All right. Look at uh, look at the case of the, of the Tower of Babel. What happened? The people came together as one. They all spoke one language. All right, they 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 came together as one people, and and really the whole scenario of the Tower of Babel is indicative of America, because all people are coming together, and all different nations come in come into America as one people. All right, and they speak the same language as what the English language. That's why the uh, English language is known as the universal language that's the language that is a requirement for you to speak 
here in the society and all of all around the world. All right. So that's why this place, America, is, and, and you know, that's another sign to show you that America is known as Babylon the Great in the Bible, because that's where the word Babylon comes from. It comes from the word Babal, which means confusion, because the Lord confounded the languages in the, um, in that region, all right, in the in the, in the land of Shinar. Okay. But that just goes to show you, and this is only uh, a few of many examples to show you that the Lord is not dealing with every single person on the planet Earth, and he's not dealing, he's not even dealing with the whole nation of Israel, all right? He's only dealing with a certain number out of the nation of Israel, and he's setting them aside for himself, all right? Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the precepts. So, Matthew, the 25th chapter, uh, I'm not going to be too long, I'm just going to make this a quick video. Matthews, the uh, 25th chapter, and this is at the uh, 31st verse. It says, uh, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered, just like you. To make a quick move here, slide, I'm in transit. Um, it says, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. See? So he's going to separate the sheep from the goats, all right? Because the sheep are the ones that the Lord, or ones that belong to the Lord, all right? Um, pursuant to John the 10th chapter, where it says, um, his sheep hear his voice and they follow him. All right. But the rest are just goats. All right. And the thing, the difference between a sheep and a goat, you know, a sheep is not going to put up a fight. All right. You know, a sheep is going to be led, it's going to go wherever you want it to go. But versus a goat, a goat will yell and cry out at, um, and be poised to, to fight against you. All right, they'd be poised to uh, to to rebel and to not go where you wanted to go. All right, that's why uh, I put up an image, um, you know, about a few months ago, with a with a with a goat, with a with a rope tied to uh, the goat, and uh, the owner tried to get their goat to move where he wanted to move, but the goat wouldn't move. All right. You know, I believe I believe that video was called uh, Stiff Neck. All right. Because that's exactly what a goat does. It, it, it stiffens his neck and stays in one place. OK, that's indicative to two thirds of our people. That's why the Lord said uh, Israel is a stiff neck nation. OK. Now it says. Uh, it says he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left see now um i want to go from there i want to go to matthews the uh 10th chapter it's like it uh matthews the 10th chapter this is at the uh 34th verse It says, think not that I'll come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. You see? So the Lord didn't come to send peace on earth, man. All right. But he came to send a sword. So that is a huge cut to these, these whacked out Christians that are... Uh, say that the Lord is coming back to make peace with every single person on the planet earth. No, man, the Lord is coming back to divide and conquer. Okay, that's that's the that's the name of the objective. Divide and conquer. The Lord is dividing the righteous from the wicked and he's going to conquer this current world that we're living in today. All right.
Now, um, reading on, it says, For I have come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter in law against her mother in law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So the Lord's commit, and, and, and that also is a huge cut to um, the family man Israelite. Because the Lord's not dealing with the whole uh, a whole family. You know, the, the Lord can do that. All right, he'll he'll um have a whole family believe. But in most cases, you'll come across, you know, this truth, and your family's not gonna be with it. All right. I'm gonna just tell you like it is. They're gonna fight you tooth and nail about it, and they're gonna look at you sideways and they're gonna disown you. I mean, that's just how it is. Because it's truth it, it, when you when you dealing this truth and the scriptures and truth and sincerity and into the into the one hundred percent doctrine, this really cuts the soul. All right, and when you cut the soul, man, that's that's the deepest cut that you can ever uh, uh, you can deal to an individual. All right, you know that's something that that you can't recover from, man. Okay. That's why this, this word is so powerful. Because it shows you the, the, the intentions and the and the thoughts and the, the type of spirit that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis when you bring this word out. All right. Now um I want to move on from there. I want to get the book of uh Luke. Yeah, 12th chapter. It's at the 51st verse. It says, suppose ye that I'll come to, to come to give peace on earth. And that's that's the question again, man. Or that's the uh, the same scripture. But in particular, man, it tells you that suppose suppose you that Yahweh Shah is coming back to send peace on earth. Read on. It says, I tell you, nay. All right. No. But rather division. OK, so the Lord is coming back for a division. All right. That's why when when the time comes and all hell breaks loose, and also when the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip, is fully implemented, that's when you're really gonna see a, a, a total separation. All right. Who belongs to Yahweh by Shemuel Shai? Who does it? Uh, verse uh, 52 says from for from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided three against two and two against three and the father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law Matthew the uh, 24th chapter and this is all in the New Testament man <laughs> okay this is all in the I mean, these are all New Testament scriptures that I'm reading out of but you know the, it, and these Christians love to, to dwell on the New Testament and speak on it but yet they still don't even understand the New Testament alright because the New Testament is just a continuation of the old okay because like the scriptures say um the Lord didn't come away to do with the law of the prophets. He didn't come to do away with the Old Testament. Okay? But he came to fulfill it. Alright, Matthew's 24th chapter is at the uh, 40th verse. It says, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. Alright? Two women are going to be working. It says the one shall be taken and the other left. Uh, verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. See? So the point in the scripture is that it's going to be two in the field, right? But one's going to be taken. Okay? This also fulfills the scripture where the Lord says he's going to gather his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. 
because you have some of the elect that's not even here in Babylon. You have some of the elect that's out, that's scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. So in the scripture where it says two, or, uh, then shall two be in the field because the field, if you go into the, uh, the scriptures, I believe it's, um, yeah, in, in the book of Matthew, the uh, 13th chapter where the Lord spoke about the, the parable of the sower. He, he uh, explained that the field is the world. All right. So out in the world, all right, there's going to be two. But one's going to be taken and the other left. All right. So the Lord, once again, is going to separate one from another. He's going to take the ones that he want and he's going to leave the other behind. Okay. So uh, I'm going to end off on this next scripture here. It's uh, Deuteronomy. Now, now I'm moving into the Old Testament. Uh, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. And this is at the 8th verse. Now, this is what the Lord, Yahweh Bashanel Shai, has done since the beginning, going all the way to the time of when Israel or Jacob was born. And he divided that inheritance unto Jacob, unto the line of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then extended to the 12 tribes. Okay. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, right? Because people love to say that, well, yeah, all people came out of Adam, you know? Or don't we all get a, a part of salvation that we all get a part of inheritance because we uh, we come out of Adam? We all come out of Adam? No. All right. The Lord divided the sons of Adam. Okay. There's a reason why the Lord divided the sons of Adam because that line was going to be kept through a certain uh, a certain uh, person, man, or should I say, a certain lineage. Okay. So when the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, and when He separated the sons of Adam, He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. And this is the point: for the Lord Yahweh Bashemel Shai's portion is His people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and which Jacob is synonymous with Israel, all right, talking about the 12 tribes, that's the Lord's portion, all right? That is the Lord's portion. That who is the Lord's dealing with, and that's who the Lord is going to deal with forevermore. The Lord has not put away Israel, pursuant to our Romans. Uh, I believe it's the 11th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, Paul made a statement saying that the Lord didn't put away Israel because he was also an of, of, of Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. And the Lord have kept that oath which he swore to our forefathers, man. He didn't forget about the oath. He didn't forget about the promise. And he didn't make any changes to it. Okay. So again, Israel is a lot of his inheritance and it's not going to change. The rest of the nations, they're asked out. I'm going to go ahead and end it off on that note. Lord's will is edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. To the next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule very well to this very day. Also, Shalom, peace and safety and salutations to the hopeful elect that is uh, plowing in his work, giving you due diligence to make your calling and election sure. In faith, in truth, in sincerity, in all charity. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.